It was not long ago when the idea of consumers collecting digital fashion pieces without a physical item attached might have sounded like parody. But in recent years, with the rise of the metaverse and NFTs, pop culture has begun to consider digital fashion as a valid medium in fashion design. With some of the world's largest fashion houses taking notice, like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Nike, Tiffany, Prada, and many others dedicating large budgets towards the production of digital fashion. It seems obvious that these trends are becoming increasingly more prevalent and has forced consumers to consider their own digital identity. While this may seem like a new phenomenon, the history of digital fashion and the road that led us to where we are today is rather interesting. The concept of designers and brands incorporating a digital element to their collections stretches further back than you might think and has been pioneered by some of the world's most influential designers and fashion houses. Today I want to take a look and recount the full history of digital fashion. Early on, the concept of digital fashion could have been considered more of an art direction rather than its own pillar within the fashion industry. But in the late 90s, designers began toying with this idea and considering how they can incorporate advanced technologies into the fashion design process. One of the earliest instances of this, and perhaps the first spark of digital fashion, came out of Japan by the designer Issey Miyake. Miyake's 1997 collection, Apoc, A Piece of Cloth, introduced the idea of bringing fashion to the digital realm. The collection utilized computer-aided design and production techniques to create seamless garments from a single roll of fabric. This revolutionary approach to fashion production and design laid the groundwork for the exploration of digital technologies and their integration into the fashion industry. The APOC collection showcased the potential of digital processes in the fashion industry, allowing for greater precision, customization, and efficiency in garment creation. By utilizing computer programming and automation, Miyake's collection pushed the boundaries of what was possible in terms of design, fit, and material utilization. Issey Miyake's early foray into the digital realm played a significant role in sparking the history of digital fashion and inspiring the subsequent developments within the field. Another designer who early on recognized the value of technology within fashion was Helmut Lang. After showing his fall 1998 runway collection, Helmut Lang told reporters, This is a global business, yet the way we communicate is still very old-fashioned in many ways. He continued, We're in the midst of a technological revolution. We all know it, we all talk about it, but we have to live it. The most difficult step is to just go for it. Long before the idea of streaming events was common practice, Helmut Lang had the idea to stream his runway show via CD-ROM as well as uploading it to the internet. Lang was hailed as the first designer ever to do this showing 81 looks on models as they walked a concrete runway floor. Editors and buyers could view the collection in photos and videos uploaded to the internet or by watching the CD-ROM. In her 1998 review of the collection, Constance C.R. White pointed to the fashion industry's curious lack of tech savvy, stating, From computer-assisted designs and textiles, to using computers for sales, to staging virtual fashion shows in the way Mr. Lang has done, fashion has been slow on the uptake. She continued, It is odd that in an industry that lives by changes every season, the method of presentation has not changed in almost 50 years, as anybody who received the disc could view the show and expect the garments. This could be seen as a groundbreaking moment for fashion and technology, as a single designer was able to change the standards within an industry forever by having the foresight to use digital and physical technologies. After the showing of this collection, it became clear that technology was soon going to change the fashion industry forever. Through the early mid and 2000s, it became clear that the fashion world began to respect digital fashion as a medium and began to integrate technology within fashion when appropriate. It wasn't until the turn of the decade, with the tech explosion of social media, as well as augmented and virtual reality, did the concept of presenting clothes digitally become a true strategy for all major fashion houses. This became obvious as some of the world's leading fashion houses began incorporating tech and digital elements in their collections. In 2007, Prada made a groundbreaking move by collaborating with LG, the cell phone company, to create a Prada smartphone. This was the first of its kind by a fashion house at the time. The LG Prada phone was announced about a month before the iPhone, but LG and Prada had been openly discussing its creation since 2006. The head of LG's mobile handset R&D center even accused Apple of stealing their design, saying, We consider the Apple phone a copycat of the Prada phone. After the design was unveiled when it was presented in the IF Design Award and won the prize in September of 2006, I have to give it to LG and Prada. 
the iPhone design is very similar to their phone. In 2010, Gucci collaborated with the anime, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, to create outfits for the characters of the show to wear within the manga. The campaign was such a success that the images went on to be displayed in the stores, and later on, the fashion house created a season's worth of outfits for characters to wear in the show. In 2011, Burberry incorporated augmented reality into its flagship store windows during London Fashion Week. Passersby could use their smartphones to view virtual runway shows and interactive content, blurring the lines between the physical and digital shopping experience. In 2012, Prada collaborated with Final Fantasy to create a lookbook with characters from the game wearing the collection. The collab was well received and reinforced the industry's interest in crossovers with video games and anime, coming off the heels of the Gucci and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure collab. In 2013, Alexander Wang collaborated with Samsung, allowing the audience to interact via a custom mobile experience. Also in 2013, Diane von Furstenberg partnered with Google Glass, incorporating wearable technology into the runway show. In 2014, Dior launched their own VR goggles called Dior Eyes. By utilizing AR and VR technology, users could virtually attend fashion shows and try on products, providing more of a brand experience. A groundbreaking move by Dior, as it was the first fashion house to create hardware technology to enhance the brand. In 2016, Louis Vuitton collaborated with Square Enix, the developer of the Final Fantasy series, to feature a character from the game, Lightning, as the model for its spring-summer 2016 ad campaign. The campaign showcased Lightning wearing various Louis Vuitton outfits and accessories. The campaign aimed to bridge the gap between high fashion and digital entertainment, illustrating the convergence of pop culture and luxury fashion. In 2018, Balenciaga released a virtual reality lookbook, showcasing its fall-winter 2018 collection. The VR experience allowed users to view the collection up close and explore the designs in a digital environment. Also in 2018, Machino collaborated with The Sims video game, creating a collection with pixelated garments and accessories that could be purchased within the game. In 2019, Gucci launched an AR feature within its app, allowing users to try on the brand's sneakers virtually. Customers could see how the sneakers looked on their feet before making a purchase, enhancing the online shopping experience. As the fashion industry was finally starting to catch up with the technology of the time, a new trend quickly emerged as the continued development of technologies found a use case within the fashion world. Soon, terms like NFT and Web3 took over the space and made way for what was about to come. Fast forward to 2021, as the explosion of Web3 and NFTs hit the scene, creating digital collectibles that can be bought and sold on the blockchain. Soon these technologies started to be applied to every industry, especially fashion. Suddenly, digital fashion houses were obtaining multi-million dollar valuations. It was not long until the traditional fashion world took notice, and the world's leading fashion houses began to participate in this new trend. Brands like Nike, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Tiffany, Prada, and many more began directing large budgets towards this new niche within the industry. These are some of the more interesting projects launched by both large fashion houses and indie designers alike. Nike launched a project called Dot Swoosh, a platform for customers to learn about Web3, collect virtual products like sneakers or jerseys, and eventually help co-create them, even potentially earning royalties on their sales. Gucci jumped headfirst into the space, creating multiple projects including Gucci Vault, an experimental concept store slash space the Vault is a digital exploration consisting of exclusive Gucci NFTs, rare vintage selections, and community voting, and the Vault will serve as a hub for Gucci's Web3 efforts moving forward. 10KTF times Gucci, a project that consists of unique collections of personalized NFTs envisioned by Gucci's Alessandro Michel, crafted by a digital artisan, Wakmi-san. Wakmi-san is a fictionalized digital tailor that lives in New Tokyo, who crafts one-of-one -one clothing accessories for select NFTs. And finally, Super Gucci, Gucci and Super Plastic, a limited edition vinyl toy and digital collectible company, teamed up to create Super Gucci. Each NFT incorporates house codes found in the Gucci Aria collection and unlocks an exclusive 8 inch tall ceramic Super Gucci sculpture, handcrafted by sculptors in Italy. Tiffany released a project called NF Tiff, partnering with Larva Labs to give holders of CryptoPunks, one of the earliest NFT projects, the option to claim an 18 karat gold custom pendant of their CryptoPunk. The NFTIF project sold out in 21 minutes, generating 7,500 ETH or $12 million. Takashi Murakami, in collaboration with Artifact and Nike, released a collection of custom digital Air Force Ones that were later matched one-to-one -one with their physical equivalent. The project was a massive success and paved the way for many other projects by the team. 
Danny Cole is a New York City-based artist who released a collection of 10,000 profile picture NFTs centered around his art called Creatures. The collection sold out and later made way for Danny's clothing collection based on his creatures. Footwear designer Sean Witherspoon released a project called Mintage, an interesting concept that has continued to evolve, allowing holders to shop a curated collection of vintage garments. Nick Knight, the legendary fashion photographer, has also entered the Web3 space, creating a collection called Icon One, based off of his fashion photography over the decades. Knight is reimagining the future of fashion, centering around world-famous model Giselle. Knight has also been quoted saying, he believes Web3 will be more culturally influential than fashion photography. While these projects mentioned are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what we know today as digital fashion, it signals a shift within the industry as the lines between physical and digital consumerism are being blurred. Even though these concepts are new, they must be taken seriously, as every major fashion house now has a strategy for digital fashion and how they can own the market. I find the continued thread between both individual creators and brands who have embraced new technologies within the fashion industry over the decades to be very interesting. Seeing creators like Nick Knight or brands like Gucci, who have constantly been early adopters to new trends as they develop, to be true innovators within the space. I see a clear evolution over the decades of the application of technology to fashion, leading to what we know today as digital fashion. From the early works of Issey Miyake to the digital works of Takashi Murakami, the latter cannot exist without the former. While the coverage of digital fashion, NFTs, and the metaverse by mainstream media has ceased due to major decline in both crypto and NFT markets, I expect within the next two years for this trend to retake mainstream consciousness and perhaps lead to the next major breakthrough of technology's application to fashion. Thank you for watching this video on digital fashion. If you've enjoyed it and want to see more videos like this, go check out some of my other work on the Uncommon Magazine's YouTube channel, or check out some of my older work on my personal channel. Thank you for the support. Much love, Mason.